elevation in life and in the kingdom. Someone say three. Say three. Say three. Say three. Three main discipline, character, nature that must be in you. And if it's not in you, trust God that they are imparted this month. Say discipline. Say three. Amen. This, when you have them, you can never fail in life. You can never fail in life. They are principally responsible for sustaining your talent, your gift. They keep you riding high in life. Let me say this to you. There's something called value system. Say value system. We're going to focus on that today as number one. And there's something called self-respect and self-control. Can I hear you say self-respect? Say it again, self-respect. Say self-control. Say self-control. Say strong value system. That's very important in life. Those three things are very they are fundamental to your rising, to your rising, to your rising in life, and for you to maintain and to stay on top and to succeed. Everybody wants to succeed. Discipline keeps you at the top. And discipline is the reason why many cannot rise, and when they rise, they fall fast. When they rise, they fall fast. You must love discipline. It is important to be disciplined. That is the reason why God gave you father. A good father, a mother is a trainer. More than just a provider. He or she is a trainer. They take you out. Discipline is training. Is impartation of knowledge and information to correct bad characters, bad behavior, bad lifestyle, and to hold on to that which is good and solid for your goodness in life. With that discipline, what you attract, what you found very attractive, may be the things that will destroy you. Your choices, your choices may be wrong. The people you value may be wrong. The people that are attracted to you may all be wrong because of indisciplined nature. Your life can be messed up, not because of where you live, or how, I mean, or the, the city you are living in, but the depth of your character, what you are attracted to, and what is attracted to you. It's a function of these qualities. You must be disciplined. The entire Bible is a book of value. The entire Bible is all about discipline. A mentor, a coach, their instructors. The Holy Ghost is a teacher. The Holy Ghost, Jesus is a rabbi. It's a learn of me. It's not just coming to church. You are coming to learn. To learn. So if you are not open to discipline in life, you are joking with success. You are wasting destiny. And one time is gone, you don't get them back. Your lifetime is set. Your lifetime is set. Any time wasted in your lifetime, you cannot get it back. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how powerful you are. In your lifetime, you waste 30 minutes, 30 seconds, 30 hours, 30 days, 30 years on chasing shadows. They are gone forever. Indiscipline will make you focus on what is not important. 
And so there are three main discipline traits that must be in you. That must be planted while you are still growing up. So you can keep a part. You can maintain a structure. And you can maintain success when God gives it to you. I pray for somebody here in Jesus' name that you will arrive early. I can't hear your amen. Somebody say louder, amen. Amen. Your time will not be wasted. Your hours will not be lost. You will be satisfied in this life. Happiness shall be your portion. You will sit there and make your goals, make your accomplishments, and make your impact and success in this life. You are born for something, amen. You are going somewhere. May you start on time. I say, may you start on time. May you start on time. Discipline will keep you in that structure. While others are wasting away, shedding shadows, and the enemy is eating their life and eating away their time, they are meeting wrong people, wrong marriages, wrong location, see struggling, no future ambition, blown by the winds all over the place, always in tears, breaking relationship, second marriage, third marriage, fourth marriages, many jobs, losses. Well, listen, I pray in the name of Jesus, that will not be your story. That's why you have to take this serious. You have to take it serious. There are a value system. Someone say value system. Value system. Say it again. Value, value system. system. I can't hear you. So say it again loud. Value Amen. System. Let me say to you, the lifestyle and the behavior. Say lifestyle. lifestyle. Say my lifestyle. My lifestyle. Say my behavior. my behavior. Say my heroes. Say my heroes. Okay, we don't understand what I'm talking about. Heroes means the people you want to be like. Heroes. Heroes. Is that what you say? Heroes. Heroes. Thank you. Heroes. Forgive my accent, eh? He's a cool Nigerian accent. Take and board. Amen. Amen. Listen to me. The people you want to be like, the people you adore, the people you like to copy, your lifestyle, your lifestyle, the kind of lifestyle you love, that you choose. You like this kind of lifestyle, or the way you behave, the way you act, your behavior as a human being, which has to do with the way you think. The way we think, the way we talk, what we like to do, our action. Our feelings, the kind of feelings we endure, we, we allow to go through us, the kind of thinking we sustain, we love to think that way. All of this, our function, they depend on your value system. Say value system. Amen. Every one of you have definitions. We have what we call meaning in life. How we define what does that mean to you? How do you define success? Who is beautiful to you? It varies. Your definition of life, of success, of family, of friends. All of this depends on your value system. Most cultural conflict in this world, marital conflict, all political conflict today, is all the value fight. Some people, for example, American politics today, there are a set of people or a belief, I mean, some tradition, a culture, who believe based on their godly system, biblical value, family values, that a certain lifestyle is not acceptable. It's not acceptable. 
that a man marrying a man is a sin. And for that, they are willing to put their life on the line to fight for that value. So that's why they call Paul. You see, two people arguing all the time. If you trace the root of their conflict, it has to do with what they value. What is the basis of their value? What is more important? What is wrong? What is right? Somebody is born in Saudi Arabia. He or she has a belief system that creates a set of value. Those are the things that run our choices. So when you become born again, become a Christian, the Bible is all a book of valor. It's all designed to create a different set of value system. To change your definition. To change your culture. That's why Paul said in the Bible, we have only one culture. We have one meaning. It's only when we, are, we, you, we, we focus on the scripture that we can all develop one mind. The Bible says, be of the same mind. Same mind. Same mind. Say B. It is not possible unless we allow the word of God to recreate a new mind in us. That process is called repentance. Say repentance. It's called repentance. It's called renewal of your mind. It's called conversion. It's called being born again. So you are in church to develop a value system in line with what God think. How does God think? What does God want? That is what is called godliness. Godliness is different from unrighteousness or from sin. You can be in church and be a choir and be a leader and be very ungodly. Ungodly means you do not know how God thinks. Many of us say, I want to be like Jesus. You want to be like Paul. But do you really want to be like Jesus? Do you really, really, really want to be like Paul? No, you can say that like a cliche. But until Jesus, the way he thinks, the way he walks, the way he operates, that value that he holds there becomes your value, then you are not yet becoming or wants to be like him. Many of you come to church and say, I want to be like Jesus, but deep inside you, there's somebody else that holds there you want to be like. The kind of leaders who follow that determine how we follow them depends on your value system. The kind of man you submit to is your value system. So it's very important that you and I develop a value system after the order of the Almighty. Amen. That is why the only scripture, the scripture, amen, say the, say the scripture, is a book of value. So don't take your classes for granted. It's not about coming to church just to receive miracles or be blessed. That's why churches where miracle is all about what they're after, in the end it does not stand. There are 10,000, 100,000 only to be shaken by just a little wind. You see a lot of people going to church, clapping hands for Jesus, but have different kinds of strength when it comes to temptation because their values are not yet in line with divine value. I pray for somebody today that the Lord will change your mind. Come on, I can't hear amen. I said the Lord will change your mind. The Lord will be your value center in Jesus' name. You will think like Jesus. Behave like Jesus. And that's why the scriptures are given. So look at 2 Timothy chapter 3. 
Let's look at that. Let's start from there because today I want you to see some things in the Bible. One of the things that one of the discipline traits that God wants to give you is your value. A strong, divine, godly value that you can say to yourself, whether anybody looks at me or not, this I will never do. This I will never say. Because it's just not in you. Cheating, lying, has nothing to do with just being tempted. It all depends on who you are. It doesn't matter how much, how much money is before some people to steal. They will never steal. They will never steal. No matter how much need, no matter the temptation, it can never happen because they have a strong system, a strong value system, a strong belief, a strong a, 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 a mindset that is based on God's word. They are solid on the rock. Their mind is, 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 is programmed to think like God. Amen. So it's not about the temptation. It's about who you are in the way you think, the way you feel, and what you say. Your character is essentially dependent on your value system. There's something I can never do. It doesn't matter how many thousands of men of God are fornicating. I can never and I will never. I am not boasting. The Lord is my strength. The Lord will keep me. But it is not in my desire. Not in my top. It's not a temptation I'm weak for. Somebody say amen. It can never happen by the grace of God. By his mercy and by strong value system. Now because why I had to, I had to reprogram myself. I had to rethink myself to know what it means. I know what fornication means. It's not just pleasure. It's not just pleasure. It's beyond pleasure. When you sleep with a woman, you are corrupting your spirit. Any woman you sleep with, your spirit and that spirit have met together. Now the Bible says that he that sleep with an allot, I want one. That's why God hates it. That when you bring in the Holy Spirit and evil spirit together, you corrupt the sanctuary. And the, the, one of the major punishments in the Bible, whenever God is talking about punishment in the Bible, the first one is adult. I mean, <laughs> number one is idolatry and adultery. Say idolatry. Ad, ad, uh, amen. Say, say idolatry. Say idolatry. Say idolatry. Listen to me, there are some Christians in this world, they will never go to any other God, even if they are dying. They, because they know what idolatry means to God. Idolatry is so evil that God, in, I, I think, book of Deuteronomy 13, verse, Deuteronomy verse chapter 13. Okay, let's go there. Let me just show you something. Deuteronomy 13. So you can establish some thinking. In line with the way God thinks, it takes you to go into the Holy Scripture to figure it out. And then when you spend time with the Holy Scripture, your mind starts shifting and say, Oh God, is this the way you value offering? Is this the way you think about women? Is this the way you think about ministry? And so you are changed. It's called repentance. It's called renewal of your mind. It's continuous. We are transformed every day. It's the word of God. It's not just clapping in church. You got to have time to spend with the word to have your mind in line and develop a strong value system. It makes you solid against darkness, against the devil, against temptation. You are just different. It cannot happen because of who you are. Somebody say amen. Idolatry is evil. God hates it. Look at that. I think the tournament are thin. Amen. Let me just show you something there quickly. Say that in the name of Jesus. Adultery, idolatry, lies, they are not in me. And if they are in me, the discipline of the Holy Ghost will purge them out. 
Amen. We'll purge them out. That's why you will need the Holy Ghost. Many of us learn value late in life. We will learn to be disciplined late in life. After the world have taught us, we are learning school, we learn through hardship, rock bottom, see the failure. But why don't you just try the word? Why don't you just try grace? You don't have to go through hardship to learn what is right. If you don't have parents, God, God is still your father. If your parents fail, you still have God. That's why the church is for everyone. Those who have failed, come to church. Church is a place of learning value. But today's church is a place where people get worse. Because all is about money, about what you get, getting married. No, you come here to learn doctrine. It's called doctrine. Doctrine is character, system of belief. Something say, wow, this is a way to think. This is a way to believe. Faith is so good. I'm going to build my faith. Amen. I place value on honesty. I can do this. Wow, God changed me. That is why Christ came. He said, learn of me. You come and learn. He said, come learn of me. He said, if your yoke is heavy, I will lift it up. You are in church to learn. Don't miss your Bible school. And everything I teach you today, go back home to study it. It's only good for you to have a devotional time. You are changing. Amen. Amen. You are changing. You are getting better. You are becoming like God. Amen. Amen. That's what you want. And if you and me are becoming like God, we cannot fight. How come people are fighting in relationships? Your home, is, your home is in trouble. It has nothing to do with the way the man is behaving. The no, no, no. It's a value. It's what a place values on. Most of them have cancer, so many people. Their values are different. This one just lost penny. doesn't know why spending is bad. That woman just loves being stingy. They have different ways of thinking. And they just fight and argue. Almost all incompatibility are value fight. Most religious war are value fight. Most political conflict, uh, I'm for Donald Trump, I'm for Harris, is value fight. I'm for gay, I'm not for gay, it's value fight. Amen. And all of them are right because they hold dear to their value. The way you treat a woman is the way you think about a woman. Amen. The way you honor a pastor is what you think about a pastor. The way you give an offering in church is the way you think. So if God is going to change your action, it's going to change your thinking. Amen. Because if you don't think it, you can never do it. It has to be in your thought first before it can be in your hands. Anything good or bad has to be in your thought first. Whether good, your imagination is your creation. Amen. So God wants you to focus on the scripture. Okay, I'm saying too many things, right? Are you following? Yeah. <laughs> Are you following? Yeah. Okay, I was going to show you too many scriptures and, and I went to. Because the way I think is, is too many places. Is it the Tournament 13, right? What does it say? Start less on verse 1. If there arise among you a prophet... Listen, 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 listen. Just quickly read. Come in. Hurry up. Read fast. We have time. If there arise among you a prophet or a, or a dreamer of, of dreams, or dreams and gives thee a sign or a wonder... A, listen, a prophet. He gives you a dream. It's perfect. And what the Bible says in verse 2? It said... And the sign... It says, and the signs and the wonder what? Come to pass. Oh. Where have you... They fail? They came to pass. They fail? I mean, the prophet came and said, your name is Antela. Your daughter's name is Antelope. And your husband's name is Antipa. And they're all correct. And the man is anointed. He said, and the signs and the wonder come to pass. Whereof he spake unto you, saying, let but go. let us go after, after other, other gods, gods which you have, have not known. known. He said, let us serve them. What shall we do to that prophet? Verse 3, let's go. You shall not Thou shall not hearken unto yeah? the words of that prophet uh -huh. or that dreamer uh -huh. of dreams. For the Lord your God proves you yeah. to know whether you love the Lord your God with mm -hmm. all your heart and with all your soul. And Verse 4. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear 
him and keep his commandments and obey his voice and you shall serve him and cleave unto him. Verse 5. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death. That prophet that is perfect in prophecy, idolatry, say, put him to death. And God didn't stop there. So that's how, how, how God plays idolatry. If you drill down the line, he said your family, your family, your, fa your sister, your brother. He said if your brother put you to idolatry, they say let us go and see occultist. You're looking for fruit of the womb. Let's go and try a natural part that will concoct some things for you. He said, you, take him, take him out, stone him, let the nation kill him. And he said, if there be among you a son of the belly, because the first commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart. God hates idolatry. So it doesn't matter how perfect the prophecy is, the anointing is, any man in this world call himself a prophet that is leading you to another God, he said, let him be killed. So if you are a man of God, a priest pastor, you now read that in the Bible and you are gifted, you are anointed. Will you want to lead God's people to other God? Because you will be killed. So your gift and talent is not enough, they will be killed. I'm not going to kill you. The church will kill you. And those who want righteousness will kill you. And you read down through the entire Bible. You will see how much God is idolatry. So never in your life entertain to go into tarot cards. All of those things the Bible says is good. Witchcraft, it don't get in there. If you do, you don't understand how God treats idolaters. Everything you own, everything you have is wasted. If when they're going to kill idol, idolaters, the Bible says they get everything they own, heap it up in the center. Any spoil, he said, not a single pain should be left. Everything is burned to ashes. So in that way, if you are closer to God, you are hearing God's man, you have this kind of value, you see it will determine how the kind of friends you listen to, where you go, because you have a different value system designed by God's own value. Somebody say amen. That's why the scripture is so powerful. Look at 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 3. Say after me, in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, develop in me a strong valor after your order. Let me think like you think. Let me see like you see. Amen. I can imagine you train your children the same way. That home is called godly home. And in a godly home is where God sit down to bless. There are many Christian homes that are not godly homes. They are not godly homes. They are not godly relationships because they are not attempting to change their valor. Every tribal conflict or racial issue is all values fight. It has nothing to do in the reality of divinity. Amen. But when we come to church, it's only in church that all minds can be the same. What God wants is that your mind and my mind to be same. Before I read 2 Timothy 3, I mean, 2 Timothy 3, 16, let's go to Philippians 2, 2, Philippians 3, 5, 6, I mean, 3, 16. This is exactly what God wants you and me. This is the only way you can have unity. Only in church can we have no tribalism, no racism, because when you begin to see the scripture, you can't see color. You cannot see color in the Bible. You can't. You can't see race in the Bible. All you see is God's children. Zion children. God's children. But to you, you are seeing 
a white God children. African believers. Because you are not yet delivered from your value system. The word of God has not changed your thinking. You have been entrenched in your ungodly thinking and you bring it to church so it filters into the church so we cannot have unity. But the Bible says all of us must have one mind. Say one mind. mind. How is that possible? You from Philippines? You think like a cockroach? I from Nigeria? I think like an elephant? You think like a rat? You think like a baby? And they will all come together and God said all of this mind must amalgamate and be one mind. How is that possible? That's why in churches, they don't entertain the world. They end up fighting. They end up dividing because they are not taking it serious. Repentance. Renewal of our mind. Thinking like God. Look at Philippians 2.2. Let's go there quickly. If you are there, please read with me. Let's go. That's 3.16. Okay, they done your right. Fulfill it's 316 you. and 2 2. Okay, let's go to 2 first. Amen. Let's go. Fulfill ye Fil- my joy. Fulfill ye my what? Joy. Be ye what? Like minded. Oh, like what? <laughs> Having how many what? The same love. How many, how many what? Same love. Be of what? One accord. How many accord? One. How many mind? One. Ah. How can we all have one mind? Is it possible? Is it possible? <laughs> Pastor David has a lot of work here. <laughs> no, no, it's a lot of work here. More cultural assembly is one of the toughest to build. No, 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 no. If you are one culture in Nigerian church, everybody is filled. So when they came here and say, Oh, I don't feel at home. I said, Because you're a Nigerian. You want to dance? I said, okay, Enjoy what you're enjoying. You've been to some, some certain churches in, uh, in, in, uh, in America when they start for praise worship. When they are high in praise, it's all they do. <laughs> they can't, there's no redeem. <laughs> but go to Africa. You go, go. <laughs> how, can we, how can we be together? I don't like it. No, the Bible says it on one mind. It's, that, it's not funny. Look at Philippians 2 2. I mean, Philippians 3 6. 3 6. Shout out in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Is disciplining my value system. Disciplined creating my a value system in me. System that mind. encourages unity. Where love, Where love reigns, when harmony prevails. Harmony prevails. Say amen. amen. Nevertheless, we are untold, we have already attained. Let us walk on by the same road. Let us mind how many things? Same thing. That is challenging. It's not easy. But it's easy when the word of the Lord is at the center. Look at 2 Timothy 3.16. Or else, listen, everybody, you'll be divided all over the place. I don't like this one. I don't like that one. I don't like that. I can't cope. No. You can. Just let the word of God recreate you. It's called being born again. Amen. It's called being a new man. In a new kingdom. Only in Christ. There is no president that can ever terminate racism. All this racism, let's stop the racism. It will never hand. It will never, there's no man, there's no system, there's no law that can until we all come under the tutelage of one master. Amen. Through the world. Look at that, Second Timothy 3.16. All scripture. How many scripture? All. How many scripture? All. Is given by what? Inspiration. Look at what it says. It didn't say all scriptures are. It said all scripture is what? Given. So the Bible is one day. So the way I can, I can, if I want to deceive you about the Bible, I come in like Satan does. This is your own theory. You believe this. You believe that. I'm only for New Testament. I will not read Old Testament. Who told you? 
Jesus quoted Old Testament. Apostle Paul established his truth on the Old Testament. The laws of God are perfect. It only gets better with covenant. One is saying the same. They are all saying the same thing. All scripture. See all scripture. Say the Bible is one. Amen. All scripture is given by the inspiration and is profitable for what? For what? What is doctrine? Doctrine is a set of rules, belief system that governs our way we behave. Paul told Timothy, do not get away from doctrine. Give yourself to doctrine so the church can learn how to behave. Doctrine is when we come to church and learn what is discipline, what is law, in line with God's thinking. I mean, we we'll come to church and say, okay, now let's talk about how many men that will prosper. It's okay. Let's talk about healing and deliverance. It's okay. He gathers the crowd because human beings are need centered, human beings are selfish. We don't want to learn, but want to have. We all want to have. I mean, I mean, every fast food is making money because people buy it every day. You want to make money, go and start a fast food. The day Madonna, uh, uh, I mean, run down, then I will, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will know that things have changed. Every time you go to Tim Hortons, it's always lined up. And yes, you can buy coffee at home, right? And everything is full of sugar. Pastries, sugar, it's not long. Even after COVID. In COVID, they, are, they still made their money. Because human beings, we are all self-centered. There is no human being that is not selfish. The only one that is not selfish is the one that God has shown to die to self. When you go into the Bible, you see how selfless is calling you to. So that you can love somebody. Because God knows you can never love unless you break it. So you read the Bible, it will show you, you oh my God, this is who I was. And then, oh my, 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 I've been so selfish. Everything is about me. I'm so self-centered. Oh, I want all the attention. I want all the money. Oh, no. And then you start to repent. So, and then, suddenly, you now find that you can keep that woman, that boy. Because you're no longer thinking about yourself anymore. If you're a child of God, you are also thinking about what you are doing to him. How does it think? You begin your thinking, not from yourself, but from the others. That is what it means to be, have joy. Joy means Jesus first. J for Jesus. Ho for others. You. I mean, why? For you. Last. Jesus first. Others next. You last. Who can behave like that? We are not born like that. The day a child begins to grow, at the age of six, you hear the word, my. When the baby, look at a uh, 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 little, uh, my little daughter now, uh, Similua, my granddaughter. Everybody wants to carry her. Simi, amen. Lily Rose, yes, she's looking at me. Everybody can carry her now. She's everybody's baby. When she grows up, because every human being has eight instinct, natural instinct. The first one is everybody wants to eat. You want to eat? That's why when you woke up from when you were born, the first thing that came out of your mouth was, Mommy, give me food. You cried for food. That's the first thing. You want to, everybody wants to eat. Everybody wants to play. Then everybody gets to a point when you become at age of six, you want to know yourself. Now we're going to say, this is my mom. This is my dad. Don't touch me, my own thing, my thing. Become self-possessive. My toy. Mm, this is my, 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 my. You are becoming selfish. If that is not trained by a father, a mother, and it grows, it grows. People who love to play too much have been playing since you are two years old. That's when now it gets to a point, it's not regulated, it's not controlled by parents, it now becomes an addiction. And when devil takes of it, you are just playing all over the place until you lose your job. They say everybody wants to enjoy life. Everybody wants to look. 
I mean, have you gone through go through the I mean uh, I mean the 401? And you think there's an accident and every as the traffic goes slow, everything backed up, and then you just drive past, you find there's nothing here, they're all looking. <laughs> you're just looking. You everybody wants to look, you, you want to look. You want to laugh, you want to eat. It's an instant in man. It makes all us of us selfish. That's why the devil said, he said, I know what is in man, devil. He said, I know him. He told God, he said, I know the man. He said, just put your hand on him. He said, every man will defend himself. Put fire on him, you'll see that selfishness come out. So to be selfish is just natural. But if it's not regulated, at a point, and devil adjusts your selfishness, you become wicked, Me, because Narcissism. Everybody is a small narcissist. But the chronic one are the one the devil have taken over their selfishness. Amen. But listen, when you now come to the Bible, you now begin to read your Bible on every day, you now see this is not the way God thinks. That Jesus Christ left his own glory, left his own name to associate with the small you and me. To save you from sin. And the Bible says, let this mind that was in Christ be in you. Humble yourself. How can God come down? And I say, oh my God, you came down. You died for me. And he will say, oh yes, I died for you. You died for your friend. That's the Bible. Oh, you died for me so I can get more money. Who say, I'll give you a lot of money, but out of that money, give 90% away. Is it me? No, no, I can't just say, God, devil, I bind you. Get out of here. No, no, it's God. Give it away. Amen. It will teach you selflessness. That's why the Bible is better to get transformed, disciplined by committing your life to the scripture. It's not just going to church or clapping in service. Have a daily Bible study with your children, with your husband on a regular basis. It's called repentance. It's called transformation. It's called renewal. It's called regeneration. It's called being born again. Somebody say louder, amen. I can hear your amen. Now let's let's keep on reading. Profitable for what? Oh, come on, child. We sit, uh, we sit together. Profitable for what? Doctrine. For a set of belief that we all there to ourselves. We discovered it in the study of the scripture. And then for what? Oh, what is reproof? What is reproof? Somebody tell me what is reproof? Reproof, no, yeah, correction is come from reproof. Reproof is when somebody tells you you are wrong. Amen. When they tell you you are wrong. Amen. Father can reprove us. A bit coach can reprove you. Friends can reprove you. They can tell you you're wrong. Okay? But it's okay if your friend is telling you, reproving you. But what if your reproof is coming from the Bible? What if what is correcting you, you read it and you say, wow, I am wrong. God has not want this. That's a better way, man. The scripture is profitable for reproof. And then for what? Correction. And then for what? In righteousness. Why? Why? Verse 17. Or oh, is it not there? Why? That a man of God may be what? What? And thoroughly furnished unto all good works. You'll be perfect in this life. You'll have a good behavior. The law will give you a strong value system. Listen to me. I can't teach. I, did, I, I, didn't, I didn't go deep like I said to my ministers. I said I want to preach on something. I spent 25 minutes on introduction. But I said, <laughs> I still want to teach you about value system. Amen. How many of you know why? Go to the turn room. Quickly, let me just quickly rush quickly because uh, it's very important you get it so that we can actually try to see how many of these discipline traits we can impart in our life this year in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I say amen. amen. The turn room 23 verse 18. 
Hold your quickly, hold your quickly. Like, I want us to hurry together. Let's go, church. Thou shalt not bring the heart of awe. of a awe. You know what a awe is, right? And then what? Or the price of a dog. The price of a dog into the house of the Lord your God for any vow. For any vow. Amen. Amen. For even both days are what abomination unto the Lord thy God. The higher of it all. Why do you think God doesn't want the higher of it all? A whore goes out and make money. And, if, and, and you need money in the church to build the sanctuary. You need money. And God said, don't take that money. Because the money she's bringing in is from the practice of prostitution. The question is, why is that? And he said, the price of a dog. If you see the other translation there, it's talking about male prostitute. Read Matthew for me, Matthew. Seven verse six, quickly, hurry up. Why is the eye of it all not accepted? There are two animals in the scripture the Bible associates with uncleanliness, immorality. Is associated with worthlessness, uselessness, unclean. How will you not know it? Or how will you know it? It's only when you begin to read the Bible. See, the higher of it all. There is a divine value system. There are something called Belial in the Bible. Belial. It's not a devil. When they call them children of Belia, it means worthless fellow. People who have no value for spiritual things. In Matthew chapter 7, look at what it said. It said, whatever is holy, make sure you do not give it to a dog. It said, whatever is a pear, it said, don't give it to swine. It said, if you do so, they will trample under their feet and then turn again and then they will attack you. So you have something that is holy. Say, look for who are you giving it to? Does he or she has value? Without value, abuse is inevitable. Without value. Listen, any investment, any investment any impute without value is a waste of time and life. Barely is called worthlessness. Amen. Children of Barely, daughters of Barely, Anna said, do not count your servant amen, as a daughter of Barely because I'm not just drunk. A Barely has no value for holy things. He can come. Lateness to church is even Belial behavior. If you don't know the presence of God, you can't value it. If you don't know the word of the word, it can mean nothing to you. You read your Bible and you forget the Bible in church. If you don't know the value of offering, you can't give it. You can't take the best of it. Next Sunday, by the grace of God, I will continue. Amen? Amen. And look deeper because most of most of wrong value system are traced to all bringing of gross indiscipline. I'm going to see how God will correct that in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. So in the name of Jesus, Amen, Jesus. my value 
My value. My value. My value. Come on, stand to your favorite body. In the name of Jesus, say my value. My value. My value. My value. My value. My value. From today. From today. Is being. Is being. Center. Center. Corrected. Corrected. And created. By the word of God. By the word of God. By the Holy Scripture. By the Holy Spirit. Not by culture. Not by tradition. Not by tradition. Lord, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Develop in me. Develop in me. The value system. Value system. Value system. Value system. Change my mindset. Change my mindset. In accordance to your thoughts. To your will. I am here to do your will, Lord. I'm here to do your word and do your word. Let me know the difference. Teach me the difference. Give me right definition. Teach me the way. Let me know what to make my choices on. Oh Lord. I have one life to live. Let it be valuable. Let it be valuable. In the name of Jesus, I reject time wasters. I reject. I reject all the spirit of a dog, the spirit of a swine, the spirit of Belial. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. You are important to me. Your work is important to me. What is important to you is important to me. My destiny is more important. Oh Lord, my destiny, my assignment, my life. Oh Lord, teach me the difference. The difference between carnality and spirituality. And spirituality. Teach me the difference. Give me like definition in this life. I reject the definition and the meaning of darkness, of the devil, of the world. Oh Lord, adjust me, train me, let me know what is right for me and my children in this life. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, you're always on time. On time. You're always on time. You can do no wrong.